typically how Fran McCaffrey prepares his team in the offseason? Well, it's just, it's unique how teams schedule these days with the net rankings and all the ratings that go with that. And you obviously schedule to your advantage on opening night. It's an important time to get off to a good start. And Harding's got to control the game. He's got to control the tempo, and he can't turn the ball over. Josh Six, first shot of the night off the back of the rim. Rebound by Commerce. Seven Phelps going the other way with it right now. Back up to the top of the key. You know, the Lions are going to run a lot. They're going to take a ton of threes and a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball. If you're Iowa, you have to be patient. That help side defense is critical. Cameron Jane's first shot off to the left and out of bounds. So Iowa getting their second chance of the evening. You know, the keys for Iowa in this one, patience against the switching. The Lions will switch one through five. Turnovers have been a little bit of a problem in the scrimmages and in practices. And then you got to rebound the basketball. There are going to be a lot of long rebounds with all the threes being taken. Freeman's ball is up, tangled up on the ground right now. Commerce has it, and a jump ball is called near the baseline. That should be AM Commerce possession. Well, for AM, the keys, they got to hit 15 threes in this game. If you're going to come on the road against a Big Ten power, you've got to knock down those open shots. Try to compete on the glass, and obviously, points and transition critical for them. They've got to find a way to get some easy baskets against its length and size of the Hawkeyes. Well, you mentioned big opponent, but we talked about it earlier. This is one of the biggest arenas some of these players have even been in in their entire collegiate career. That's right. It, uh, it was an honor for these guys to even shoot around here. They were very excited to be on the road to get a play against a lot of the teams they grew up seeing and on these big networks. But Scooter Williams, number one, he's got the green light. He's got pink shoes, but he's got the green light around his neck. He's going to take a lot of shots. He likes to get downhill and attack. Well, it's Williams with the ball now, taking the three-pointer. Just rims out. Rebound by Dembele, and now Harding going the other way. Dribbling around the left side, taking himself past to the opposite corner. Payton Sanford for three. No good again. Still waiting our first points of the evening. Top of the key, Josh Dix. The first points of the season are on the board. Dix for three. A great point guard play by Harding. He got Peyton an open three from the corner, and then he comes back and finds Dix off the offensive rebound. That's what you want to do as a good guard. Get your best players open and get them shots early in the game. Well, it's Kalik down in the paint, and he'll get the first points for the Lions of the season. Harding moving quickly the other way, and a foul called off the ball. So I will get the ball on the baseline. But you brought it up earlier about Brock Harding yeah. needing to control the game. Graham McCaffrey talked about it earlier in a press conference. He called Brock Harding a floor general. And when you hear that, what do you think about a guy? Well, just a guy who likes to make everybody else around him better. And you saw that in those first couple of possessions. He knows who needs to score for this team. The one thing he's got to continue to work on is not turning the ball over. But you can give him a little bit of grace because he makes so many dynamic plays out there. He's going to have a few turnovers. He won the starting job. He's been told all his life he doesn't belong at this level. But you can see from that move right there, he's proved most people wrong. Absolutely. A beautiful move around the side as he'll draw in a shooting foul. That one, I believe, is on number two, Evan Phelps. Brock Harding going to the line for the first time today. So exciting to watch, very focused, extremely vocal. I mean, this is a guy, if you're not rebounding, if you're not getting back on defense, he will let you know about it and just has to play with the chip on his shoulder, won the starting job. And when you're undersized coming in to the Big Ten, I mean, it's got to be personal every single night. And he just continues to get better every time I see him play. Makes the first free throw, misses the second. Harding only two points in that exhibition game against Minnesota Duluth, but 2023 Illinois Mr. Basketball expect him to heat up. Down on the block, pass is deflected by Dembele and stolen by Josh Dix. And he'll turn the ball right back over. It's Phelps on the fast break, working down the lane. Will hold up, and it's back up top near the timeline The Phelps. A really wise decision by Phelps, makes a good defensive play, does not try to conquer the entire team, kicks it out to his teammates and gets rewarded for it. That was a big time shot, but set up by number two Phelps, staying disciplined on the road. A long three there 
as Commerce takes their first lead of the evening, 5-4. Harding takes it up himself, lobbed the Freeman off the glass for two, and Iowa's retaking the lead. Six to five, and a beautiful assist from Brock Harding to former prep teammate Owen Freeman. Now it's Kalik on the left wing. Back over. Look up top to Phelps. Little movement here off ball. Phelps will take it himself down the right side of the lane and get to the bounce off the rim and in for two. Well, he put Dembele there in the vice grips. He was on help side defense, and he had to chase the shooter out, which opened it up and probably needed to show a little more there so they couldn't get dribble penetration. But Dembele can cover a lot of positions for a big guy. Back inside, the Freeman muscling his Got way it. through, and he'll get the add one. Freeman is back to the free throw line, going for the old-fashioned three-point play. Well, those are the ones that you don't pass out, even when you're double team. You try to conquer the defense, make that spend a lot of time with him, and it'll be fun to catch up. And I'll tell you, maybe the unsung hero of that season was John Streif, the athletic trainer. It's, it, again, <laughs> it was a different time where it seemed, you know, broken bones wouldn't keep you off the floor. You just tape guys up, you know, take some aspirin and get back out there. And it was that type of team. And it, in an era when not a lot of teams went to the Final Four, Bobby Hansen told me earlier today, they just limped literally into the NCAA tournament and then got hot. Yeah, shorter or smaller field rather that is, but we'll have a foul call. A charge off ball by number eight there. It's Yusuf Sali for the Lions. Now Iowa back with the ball as Owen Freeman did miss that free throw for the old fashioned three point play coming before the break. Got the and one. A pass to Sanford working inside. Stopped on the two on one, back out to Dembele. Inside the Freeman pass almost intercepted. Inside the paint back to Dix, wide open three off the front of the rim and rebounded by the Lions. Well, that's the second wide open three that he's had a look at. Now, he's not going to miss many of those, but early in this game, he would like to have those two back. Those are about as open as you're going to get at this level. And if you're Coach Rosenberg, you're pretty happy with where things are. Your guys are playing with discipline. They're making the extra pass, competing on the glass, and, you know, getting away with a few defensive breakdowns. Pass deflected away by Freeman and stolen by Dembele. Now Harding cross-court pass back out. The Sanford pass was deflected. Takes it inside. Short corner now for Dix. Working the baseline back to Dembele from the elbow. Rebound by Freeman is punched away. And now the Lions back with the possession. They still trail by one. 8-7 ball game and a sloppy turnover there. Brock Harding working the other way. Sanford wide open, trying to throw one down and it bounces out of the rim. Second chance for Iowa as Harding's going to slow down the offense. Yeah, right when we praise the Lions, they go back-to-back -back turnovers, which leads to runouts. And that was a nice effort by Peyton at the rim, and that's too open. Again, wow. Stolen by Harding, and he'll put it up the third chance points. And a timeout now for the Lions after Brock Harding saves the possession. Now, those are the types of plays this guy makes, just all over this game, scrappy, if you're a big man, you got to know where those guards are. You can't bring the ball down. That's a big play early in this game. Screen it, but more importantly, the extra pass usually leads to open shots. Now you got to start knocking them in. Those are wide open. It's a full court press for Iowa, 1-2-2. Two, two. But Lions get it across the timeline. It's Thomas with it up top. Running a 1-2-2 two, two offense, it seems. Back to Thomas on the wing, inside on the block. Cooper Koch is on him, passes off the glass, back up, second chance, rolls in, 10-9, the Lions trail by one. Outstanding effort on the offensive glass. You stick with it. I like the high post play. We got a moving screen here, but I like the play. The Lions don't run a ton of sets, but I, I can see early on, I think they have the discipline and the IQ as these guys mesh together where they can run more sets this year. That moving screen, as you see there, on Laji Dembele. But talk about the rebound game. The Lions lead 10 to 5 over the Hawkeyes in that statistical category. That's why this game so far 
Only difference of a point. Fleek now on the right wing. Now driving inside, tipped away, but saved. Back to the corner, three point shot for the Lions. It's good. Number two, Evan Phelps is on the board. Well, just known for his high major defense, second on the team in assists, but when he's stepping out and hitting those shots, they are tough to beat, and those are the ones you have to hit on the road against a better team. Price Sanford, the mid-range shot. Gives Iowa back, even this one up, 12 apiece. As most people know, Price, younger brother of Peyton Sanford, he was a freshman last year, obviously now a sophomore, got a lot of minutes and a shooter looking to develop there in that position. Now Commerce again on the left wing. One on one with Brock Harding, now an open shot. Phelps won't take it. Tipped away from Harding. Bronze feeds it back to him, he's taking it himself. Swings around off the glass, no good. Harding slow to get back up. Kalik taking it himself down the left side of the lane and won't be able to complete the pass of the opposite block. That was his teammate Cameron James out of bounds, Iowa ball. Well, it was nice to see Price knock that mid-range jumper in. He's added that in the offseason, not just a three-point shooter. In the last couple weeks, he's been attacking the rim more, two dribble, pull up, take what the defense gives you. He's going to be a big factor this season, but doesn't just have to live and die by the three. He can do other things at the offensive end. Our first look at Drew Thelwell. Now pass inside, Evan Bronze throws one down, our first Iowa dunk of the year. It's just such a physical player, a rim t attacker, a rim runner, and how about the dime from Cooper Koch? What a beautiful pass. Freshman Cooper Koch, that is. New addition to this roster, already getting minutes. Kalik driving, kicks it back out top. Kalik from the left wing. He'll pull up on the second try. Off the rim, no good. Fellwell going the other way for the Hawkeyes. Pulls up in front of Kalik. Pass down to the baseline, the Price Sanford, and we'll get a blocking call on the Lions. Lead us on one. They had their turnovers under control in the first five minutes, but now they have seven. They've been able to compete on the glass, not just compete, control the glass, but they're giving up wide open threes, and I was going to have to make them pay. Carter Kingsbury. Just rims it, great shot, great play. The Lions are playing with fire, giving those three-point shots to Iowa that wide open. Now it's Michael Sanchez Vega misses his runner, and Carter Kingsbury with the ball. Bryce Sanford quickly pulling up on the fast break, rolls around and finds its way on the outside of the rim. Slowing up the game now, Scooter Williams with the ball. Swinging around left side. Quick ball movement. Slowed up by Iowa's defense. It's Kalik for the three-pointer. After the hesitation, no good. Rebound by the Lions and put back up on the second chance. Ties it up at 14. Quickly moving Evan Bronze. Swatted away. My goodness, Josh Taylor. Throws one into the sands. Well, Josh was beaten on that play, but he recovered nicely. Great job not fouling. Gets up there and swats it out. A late arrival for this team, also a transfer. And now Koch with it. Back to Thelwell. And Kingsbury on the right wing. Looks inside, pass is intercepted. As Williams going the other way on the fast break, will take it himself and a charge call as he went up to the rim. Well, talking to Peyton Sanford before the game, I said, who's really stood out over the last couple weeks? And he said, it's really been Kingsbury. And there you look at the fast break, good block, good run out. But Peyton's been a little beat up, has had to take some practices off. So Kingsbury's filled in for him and been really spectacular. So great job getting back, taking the hit. Now you go the other way. Kingsbury, a redshirt, redshirt junior, that is, for Iowa, just awarded a scholarship after being a walk-on yeah. player the past few years. And now Bryce Sanford will send one to the bank. Three points for him on the day. Yeah, that's what you have to do. You got to make that defense pay when they're going to collapse, switch all the time. Iowa's had a lot of open threes. That's what they do. They've had good shots. They'll keep taking them. Batho with it. 
Back to Williams going for the long range three off the back of the rim and rebounded by Freeman. Yeah, that felt like a force, didn't it? I mean, this is kind of a critical couple possessions and you've got to move the ball side to side. You don't want to get in a shootout with Iowa. Sanford in a 2-1-1. He'll call a timeout on the baseline to save himself from a turnover. But you mentioned it there, almost a four shot. And, well, you talked about why a and Commerce is in it right now. They've been patient. They've moved the ball around. They've played some solid defense and owed the boards. But how much will this game slip up if they become impatient and start forcing shots or forcing passes? Well, you just can't turn the ball over on the road. You can't go one-on-one. -on -one and, you know, you, you want to keep your own identity. But... Yeah, that's just a wide open three. Look at the follow through. If you're a young player, hold that follow through all the way down the court if you have to. It was just excellent form. It was automatic for him. Price 2023, Iowa Mr. Basketball. Got a few Mr. Basketballs on the scene. Brock Carding for Illinois. Price for Iowa, but a whole basketball family. Obviously, the two brothers, their parents, Brian and Gretchen Sanford, both played basketball. Brian at Hastings College, Gretchen at Simpson College. Now Freeman going up, blocked by Williams, and he'll snatch the ball right out of his hands. Kalik has it on the left wing. Williams, such quick hands. You think you have another dunk, and they swipe it from you. That's a powerful offensive rebound. Second chance for the Lions, put up by Moser. Lions to, again, trail by one at 17-16. Iowa's moving quickly, but held up. Thelwell at the top. Pass to Kingsbury. Swing around, moving slowly. Other block from Freeman. Passes Solon and will get tied up between Williams and Koch. A jump ball awarded to Iowa. Well, we talked to Moser before the game, and number five for the Lions. He was so excited to be in the arena, to be a part of this. He said he's going to bring a ton of energy. He was very confident that his team could hang around. And good hustle ball, both guys there fighting for the ball. Long look inside, forced to Freeman and stolen by Moser. Moser kicks it to Kalik. Back to Moser. Telegraph pass deflected by Sanford. On the right corner. Swinging it up top until they find something open. Driving now on the base. And put away, Sanford has the rebound. Price over to Brother Payton. Cross court, Freeman tipped it away. And now a wide open look from Phelps. The layup is good. And Texas A&M Commerce has the lead 18-17. Phelps there on the break, his seventh points of the evening. That leads the night for either side. So that's five turnovers for Iowa. Great drive to the basket. Take what the defense gives you, but that's been a concern in practice, the careless, self-inflicted turnovers. This is just a program and a coaching staff. I mean, they'll have five turnovers in a Big Ten game total some nights. So they got to get that short up, but here they come again. Here comes Sanford on the left side of the lane, pass over the Koch, working upside. Nothing but net Bayer for two off the block. Iowa back up by three. The Lions slowing things down as they're pushing the other way. That's Betha with it on the right wing. Over to the left wing from Kalik. Phelps. Now back down to Moser. Dribbling inside one on one with Thelwell, deflected by Freeman. Now Koch going the other way past the price, pulling up from three point land. Just a little long. The rebound deflected out of bounds off the Lions, so it'll be Iowa ball. Reach another media timeout. Under eight minutes remain in the first half. Iowa leads 21-18. We're liking from this AM Commerce team throughout the first, first portion of the first half. Well, they're obviously competing on the glass, which has kept them in the game. They weren't turning the ball over early. And they're not going one-on-one -on -one as, as what you would expect. A lot of times you bring in a lot of junior college transfers. That's just how they're built. If you're Iowa, you're being patient, getting a lot of open threes that you're going to eventually knock down and just keep the turnovers under control, play inside out. That's a pretty high percentage look right there. Dipped down the Owen Freeman who wasn't able to complete 
the Josh Dix assist. Going the other way, the Lions. Griffey moving the ball around the key. Kicked oh. back out. I thought at first Owen got hit on that shot, but he's got to be more powerful. He's got to go up and dunk it on people, be more explosive, and they can't let those guys hang on him. He's got to make them pay when he gets that deep into the paint with the basketball. Well, ironically enough, the power gets the best of him there. A foul on Owen Freeman. Taking it out of the baseline, back up to Phelps for the Lions. Khalif looking inside the paint and slapped out of bounds by Josh Taylor. Good look there, they almost saved it. But just a miscommunication with a team that's still filling out some chemistry with, as we've mentioned a few times already today, 12 newcomers to the team. Right, I'd go right back into big number 32 and get him, and there they go. That's what they were trying to do. I mean, Freeman a little frustrated. You gotta get, get it right back to him, let him start dominating. He's gotta come with more power, more energy. Doesn't matter if he gets hit, he's got to go through those fouls. This is a great pass at the at the end after taking the hit. That has been showing us something, right? Takes a little adjust. Friend McCaffrey's offense is difficult. There are a lot of plays, a lot of sets. You give him a few more weeks, pick some of those things up better, but he's got a quick first step, and it's going to be point guard by committee. Well, he'll complete both ends of the one-on-one, one-and-one. After Iowa reaches the bonus with that foul by Khalik Abdul Mateen. Short press from Iowa, won't be able to stop the Lions. Now working the baseline, stopped by Sanford. Driving in, Khalik from the right wing, pops the three. Nothing but net for number 11. 23 21, Iowa still leads by two, but Lions keeping it close. Sanford takes it himself and will complete the runner. Bryce Sanford there for two. It's points number three and four on the night. Pass almost intercepted completely by Freeman now working back to the paint. Pump fake there, shot is way short, hits absolutely nothing, and it'll be Iowa ball. Well, you gotta move that ball on if you're the Lions. I mean, you get the defense in a scramble situation. Freeman goes for the steal, doesn't come up with it. Number eight in the corner, wide open, expecting to get that ball. He just doesn't get it. Substitutions made. Freeman now on the bench. Evan Bronze back in, but the man with the ball fell well. We talked about a transfer from Moorhead State for this Hawkeyes team. And already moving the other way, off ball foul on Evan Bronze. The turnover there for number zero, but talking about Thelwell from Moorhead State will help out with Brock Harding. He's the winningest player in Moorhead State's program history. He had 34 wins in four years for the Eagles. Yeah, just doesn't turn the ball over. You know, the type of guy Fran McCaffrey wants to bring into the program. A little under the radar. Just a big adjustment when you come in and have to Learn so many sets, react quickly to it. Well, that's a big time move right there. An absolute battle between Koch and Kalik, but Kalik will win it and complete the layup there. Another foul called on this end. This one on Texas A&M Commerce. It's number one, Scooter Williams with the foul. Excuse me, that'll be called on Josh Taylor actually, which Surprises me a little. The correction there, that's Josh Taylor's first foul of the evening. That'll send Cooper Koch to the line. And he'll complete oh. the first half of the one and one. Well, Coop told us before the game, he said, the biggest adjustment to this level has been at the defensive end. So just closing out against more athletic guys, you know, learning the schemes defensively. He's gonna be fine offensively, a, a legit stretch four who can really shoot the ball. Sanford on a second chance, hits from three-point land. 29-23 lead, Iowa. Under five minutes remaining. Iowa extending their lead a little bit. We talk about Koch, rated the number 64 player nationally by ESPN. Freshman getting some good minutes in game one of the season. Phelps on the left wing. Cross to the right wing, 
Kalik pops one and rims out. Moving quickly on the fast break. Josh Dix kicks out the Koch. He'll hold up. Sanford open look for three off the front of the rim and out of bounds. Lions ball. Well, I like the shot. Well, that's a shot he can make, and there aren't many guys in the country who can pull deep and quick as well as he can from beyond the arc. But that is what he does right there. He's been doing that his entire career. Clutch moments, spectacular player, and so many guards. I don't even know how you categorize Peyton. I mean, you read the, the preseason magazine. He's a wing player, a guard, a shooting guard. So many guys don't defend, and none of those guys like to rebound like he does. Well, from the midway point all the way to the baseline, Commerce finds two points. Now Brock Harding working inside. will take it himself, dumps it down, back out to Sanford for three. He's back to back from three-point land. Iowa extends their lead to seven. How about Bronze catching the ball? and spinning on the baseline knowing where number 20 was. That's a spectacular kick out by Bronze. Beautiful pass. Lions look to dump it down to Taylor, but foul by Koch. And we'll hit the under four media timeout. Iowa starting to find some rhythm. Back-to-back -back threes from Peyton Stanford. They extend their lead to seven as we hit a break here on Big Ten Plus. And he's, I'm so glad he's back. And then Owen Freeman is going to have to play with a little more physicality at the offensive end. Stay out of foul trouble. But this is a team that can go 9, 10, 11 deep. So even when guys are in foul trouble, you know, somebody can come off the bench and lift you up. But those are the big three, and they've going to, they're going to have to dominate. And especially when Big Ten play comes around, they're going to have to get it done. Back out to Williams. Dumps it down to Kalik from three-point yeah. land. He'll connect. 28 points on the board now for the Lions. Kalik reaching 10 on the night. Well, Coach Rosenberger said he's the heartbeat of our team. He's the vocal leader, and he's a spectacular player. Going to have a nice year. There's Josh Dix. Long range dump jumper from Dix. Now Kalik with it on the right wing. The defense from Dix prevents the pass. Moser with it stolen by Brock Harding. Wasn't able to stay on his feet, looking opposite block. Gets it down to Williams off the glass for two. Yeah, that's probably three times in this game where the Hawkeyes have gone for steals. And if you don't get those, Colin, you end up in a five on four, and it usually leads to trouble. If you're going to go for a steal and jump a pass lane, you've got to find a way to get a fingernail on it at least so that it rolls out. Bronze kicks out to Harding. And Harding for three. His first three-pointer of the season. He's eclipsed six points on the night and regains a seven-point lead. And switches there with the Iowa defense, dumps it down to the left block, and there's two points for DeMarco Betha. At the four points on the night, Harding now working the left lane. Bronze was going up, but fouled on his way to the rim. So he'll see two at the charity stripe. Well, I like this lineup. I like the four shooters surrounding the big. More spacing, more lanes to drive, great pass. The Lions have quick hands, but I think Fran McCaffrey's still experimenting with these lineups, going with one big, two bigs. These guys who can really shoot, though, they like to have space. They like to have... Four, three or four around them who can shoot it. And here comes Price into the game. Freeman coming in. Good minutes by Cooper Koch in his first official game as an Iowa Hawkeye. That's a really big deal for JR and Jen Koch, his grandparents. It's a special night. That means a lot to them to put this jersey on. Especially as a freshman, obviously last year if you followed Iowa basketball whatsoever, four freshmen that all got minutes for this Hawkeyes squad, but then again, they're all back. So they're gonna get time and this still see time as a new freshman to the team and earn those minutes and they're legitimate minutes too. It's just impressive no matter who the competition is. 
Uh, everybody in the Big Ten wanted Cooper Koch. That was a good get for Fran McCaffrey. And he's going to be a big factor this year. I'll tell you what, he was injured in the offseason, didn't get as much work in as he wanted as he gets in better shape. It's a acclimated over the next two or three weeks. He's going to hit some big shots for the Hawkeyes. This year. That's just too easy. A charge oh, call on what? Iowa. Wait. And some confusion all what around. Just happened? I have no idea where the contact was even made. It was off ball. Oh, we'll take a look at a replay here. Oh, oh man. I, that Life. call is on Josh Dix with the shoulder there and no, seems very minimal for a call. I mean, the Red Sea opens up. It's a wide open layup. That's just overthinking it. Three pointer here for wow. the Lions. And it's good. Yusuf Sali connects and brings it within three. Rock Harding now working the right side of the lane. Pulls up the dribble, back to Price. Right side of the lane again, kicks out to Harding. Pump fakes. Price pulls up from three. No good. Foul called on the floor. This one is on Texas A&M Commerce. Foul call there on number five. It's Say Moser, his second foul of the evening. With that 10th foul for Commerce, that'll put him in the double bonus. So Freeman, the automatic two here. And he'll complete the first half. Freeman 0 for 1 from the free throw line before as he could not complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Take a look here at Price Sanford's three as he missed it. Well, I like the shot. This is what they do, and they're going to continue to shoot. Fran McCaffrey can live with that. He's still not happy about the, uh, the foul on the drive by Dix. I don't blame him at all. But they're going to continue to shoot the three-point shot, and it is very difficult over the course of 40 minutes Regardless of how hot or cold Iowa is, it's very difficult to stop those surges because they can hit five in a row so quickly with the firepower that they have. I mean, we started to see it with Peyton Sanford. He hit back-to-back -back threes in rhythm, and then we hit immediate timeout. But Freeman two for two from the free throw line at that appearance. Now Phelps isn't giving this one up. As shot oh, clock man. expires, misses the rim. And I will get the ball with 33 seconds on the clock. Well, Phelps got the mismatch he wanted. The clock is running down. He's got to attack. That's what we call the hand grenade assist. I mean, hey, there's one second on the shot clock. Let me give it to my buddy, you know, so I don't, so I don't get the miss. But he just lost his awareness there. He needs to attack and take advantage of that mismatch. We'll redo the inbound as the clock started prematurely. Another delay and the clock reset, 33.2 again. Peyton Sanford in ball, inbound the ball to Brock Harding. And now the clock can get going. Peyton just gave Price a glance. They've got something going here. Keep your eye on 24 and 20 for Iowa. 23 seconds, three seconds separation between the shot clock and game clock. Harding keeping him up top, a one on one. Trying to run out as much of that clock as he can. Dumps it down to Freeman. Looking across, back out to Sanford. Off the rim. And a foul called on the Lions. Number 11, Tariq Abdul-Mateen. He'll send Iowa to the charity stripe with five seconds remaining. Yeah, Price has played well in this first half. Um, you, know, you come in as a freshman, you're known as a shooter. It's difficult. You're getting a little bit of a shooting slump. Well, what else can you do for your team? Well, you guys, the pull-up jumper early in this half. That was a big play right there to get to the free throw line and steal some momentum here with five seconds to go. He's attacking the rim, defending much better. So playing with a lot of confidence right now. First two free throws of the season for the sophomore are good. Iowa now leads 42-35. It's Williams. Getting up to the left wing, blocked by Harding, out of bounds. Still .2 seconds remaining on the clock, which I believe by rule means a shot cannot be completed. I believe you have to have .3 seconds on the clock to shoot the ball. 
And he's got to protect the rim right here. It's just a lob. You got to lob that up to the rim. You're exactly right, Colin. The only play is at the rim. And there's the clock, and there's the half. Oh. Especially on the road. Lions start off the second half with possession. Blocked away. And as Williams retrieves the loose ball, he'll step on the baseline. Went up for the dunk, but it won't count. It's Iowa ball after the turnover. He swatted away there from Josh Dix, and as Williams grabs it, was on the baseline with his left foot. So Dumbelli now with it across the timeline. Brock Harding from the top of the key, looking down the teammate Owen Freeman. Finds him on the left block, going three on one off the glass, and the first points of the second half are aboard. You talk about a mismatch. You get the point guard guarding <laughs> the five, you know to get the ball inside. And Brock does a nice job of that, but Freeman's got to take advantage of those mismatches, and he did on that play. James with it now for the Lions. Kicks it out to Phelps. Swings at the Kalik. Down on the cut to Taylor. Wasn't able to retrieve the pass. So another turnover back to back for Texas A&M Commerce. And early going the other way, Dembele working slowly. Full court press, but just man the man still. So Commerce can easily fall back into their defense. Payne Sanford spins around, finds Dix cutting across the lane and swatted away by Williams. That mismatch won't work. I tell you what, the Lions are they're crafty and they're quick, right? You think you have a wide open shot and they come out of nowhere and swat it. Right, this number 11, keep your eye on number 11 for the Lions. Oh, he's going to have to have a big second half if they're gonna pull this massive upset. Foul there on the floor, so shot will not count. But you talk about Kalik Abdul-Martin, right. the leading score, leading returning score for this Lions team. And absolutely, he's going to need a strong second half. But you talk about how quick this team is. And defensively, when they switch one through five, everyone can guard everyone is what Jaron Von Rosen pretty much told us. Do, do, you, do you see that's pretty much why they're switching every time? Because they're quick enough to do that. Oh, absolutely. That's just that's just what they do. It's. It's hard to run offense against a team that can switch all five positions. Now, they're going to have to rebound better out of it. Early in the game, they did. But when you switch that often, a lot of times you end up with your point guard on Freeman. And we talked about the quickness. Look at this. Williams Open throws court. it down after the steal. My goodness. Some emphasis on those two points gifted to the Lions. Peyton Sanford. Pump fake, nice. steps back out for the three. It's good. Payton Sanford, three points up on the board for Iowa. Oh, that's a bad shot for most players in the country, but that shot fake, that Caitlin Clark sidestep, <laughs> all these younger players are doing that now, and it's, it's really a lethal move, but you still have to knock in the shot. I mean, here it is right there. Shot fake, left, create space, get up there with the arc, Almost hit the shot clock. I want to drop that in, but that's so pretty when he pulls that. Williams now with it, bounces it off the foot of Freeman. He'll just take it the other way, fast break. And the belly dumps it to Sanford, back out to Harding. Works down the lane, kicks out the Dicks. Three-point land off the rim and rebounded by Phelps. Crosses the timeline. Back to Williams. Lions slowing things down. Kick out to the corner. One on one with Dembele. Spins around off the glass and two is good for Cameron James. Already moving quickly again. Iowa trying to rebound off the points. Harding takes it himself. And the Lions moving quickly. It's a fast paced game right now. Stepping around Dembele for two again. Cameron James four consecutive points for Commerce. Well, great job by Scooter Williams defensively. He knew he couldn't get the rebound, so but he tipped it to a teammate to start the fast break. That's too easy. Harding will miss the runner and a foul called on the floor. It's number one, Scooter Williams, who we just talked about for his defensive ability. He'll give Iowa the ball back under the baseline. Oh, look at that runner here from Harding, he just wasn't able to connect for that foul on Freeman as they both went up for the rebound. 
Pass to the belly, mid-range shot, and it's completed by the sophomore. Iowa extends their lead 49-41. Well, it's nice to have Brock taking the ball out of bounds. He's such a weapon with those lethal out-of-bounds plays Fran McCaffrey runs. He can pass it with both hands, no-look passes. The Iowa Hawkeyes have to find ways to score 6, 8, 10 points out underneath out-of-bounds this year. Kalik adds two points from the paint. 49-43. 12 points now in the day for Kalik Abdul-Mateen. That leads the entire game. Brock Hardy taking up the left side of the lane. Will not connect in the layup. Williams moving quickly the other way. He'll take it himself on the fast break. Won't be able to get around Dix and Sanford. Up court, Owen Freeman wide open. No one in front of him, and he'll throw it down. Power two, Freeman. Extends Iowa's lead. Yeah, what a turn of events. You get the five on four if you're the Lions. You can't make the layup. You don't get the call. Owen Freeman just getting back into the play and gets a little cherry pick action right there and tears the rim down. Back over the Phelps on the left wing. Lions trying to build back up. They're down by eight right now. Elite going up, tipped by Sanford. One second remains on the shot clock, fired away, and a travel call as Phelps landed before he released the ball. And that'll bring us to our first media timeout of the second half. Iowa coming out with a vengeance. Owen Freeman, give him two on the board. Iowa leads fifth a few times, Chess, a leader all around on the court. Yeah, he really is. He's the heartbeat of the program. He's very impressive. He's gonna have a monster year. It's a, that's the key. Colin, these days, you have to get old and stay old if you want to compete. And that extra COVID year, I mean, he's on the old uh, Jordan Bohan and Connor McCaffrey program. He might be here six, seven years. I don't know why anybody want to stay that long, but these guys seem to like it. <laughs> that doesn't intrigue you a little bit, saying five, six years? I don't know. I was here three, four, <laughs> five. I don't know. I can't remember how long I was here. <laughs> it was a certain amount of time. A turnover there from Iowa. Lions working the other way as they trail by eight. Just under 15 minutes remain here in regulation play. Dump down to the baseline, dribble over to the right block, and add one there. Number zero, TJ Thomas. Connects and will go for the old fashioned three point play. String music for him on the, on the block. Look at this pass by Mosher. And then there's the pump fake, use the rim. All right, look at Mosher flexing. That is a <laughs> brilliant extra path. Both teams moving the ball well getting their teammates open. T.J. Thomas, a junior, transferred from Collin College and will finish those three points. 51-46, back and forth between Sanford and Harding as they cross the timeline. Sanford now taking himself, going up for it. Foul called on the floor, though. It's on number two, Evan Phelps. Yeah, it's Excuse interesting. Me, number, number three, Nicole Sanchez Vega. Yeah, excuse me, Colin. It's interesting, the pressure defense when you have Peyton Sanford over there catching it, and he can crack that code compared to Dembele when he doesn't have that skill set. So it's kind of pick your poison for the defense. Not sure you want to pressure this Iowa team when they have their shooters and guards on the floor, but that's why I'm sitting over here and not coaching their team. <laughs> Missed the three-pointer there. Chase as it goes towards the sideline. And as it's grabbed there by number 23, DeMarco Betha, they'll step out of bounds. So Iowa will get the ball. Well, here we go again with the pressure defense. Let's see if Iowa, a couple quick passes, can split this defense and hit an open three on one of the wings. All five were brought up for Iowa, but they'll fall back with a man defense. And now... 20 seconds remain on the shot clock as Iowa back across the timeline. Where's oh. Josh Dix? Josh Dix needs a touch, maybe not on this possession, but he's got the mismatch. Freeman gets around his defender and puts an easy one off the glass. Two points for the sophomore. Iowa back ahead by seven. They've sat comfortably there for a while. It's all started off with those back-to-back -back three pointers from Peyton Sanford and just a consistent game throughout on the scoreboard after that. Pump fake there back to Moser. Driving down the right side, tipped by Harding. 
keeps his dribble, kicks out, and a travel called on the baseline. Moser with the turnover. Yeah, really good defense by the Sanford brothers. Peyton got his head snapped around, kept his arm up on that backdoor cut, and then Price just battled one-on-one, -on -one, forced the turnover. That's just what you have to do, guard your yard, but I don't know who would win that one-on-one -on -one battle in the backyard between those two. As an older brother, I got to go with older brother, Peyton. Three-pointer from Price there might make me eat my words. Come on. Some shout-outs to the younger brothers out there. Price Sanford gives Iowa the double-digit lead, and then will put us at another timeout yeah, called Peyton, by AM Commerce. Peyton and Price getting it done at the defensive end. Go to the other end. The assist. Coming out of a Texas A&M Commerce timeout. Following a major three from Sanford to extend the lead to 10. That was his 10th point of the evening. Also has two rebounds, two three-pointers. And he's three from six from the field today. A good look for all the younger brothers around in the country. But Bryce Sanford, a pivotal piece to this guard, guard bench that Iowa has. Already stolen the ball. Thelwell across the side. Rebound by Dix. Back to Price. And he'll just tip it away. Dix has it in the short corner. Swinging around the Thelwell. The Morehead State transfer. Dumps it down to Owen Freeman. Can't connect off the glass. From left block back to right. And a foul call. I believe on number five. It's Tay Moser. Well, you talked about the big three earlier in the half. And A.J. and the production crew put that graphic up. But... You know, the big story is going to be who else can step up and help the guys out. Uh, tonight it's been Price. Evan Bronze has had some good minutes. Thelwell's come in and looked really good. You know, Cooper is going to have a big impact. And Carter Kingsbury is going to play a role with this team. So those guys are all showing good minutes, good glimpses of what they can become. But you got to have everybody. Fran McCaffrey, a lot of depth and uh, can go to that bench when he needs to. But number 24 is really impacted this game and especially at the end of that half right when he got that rebound and got those free throws it just gets you into it and here's another easy bucket josh dix going the other way he'll roll it in and then add one josh dix completes the fast break gets it off the fingertips rolls around the rim and iowa now at 59 points a free throw away from 60. Point guards hate pressure defense, right? You just want to walk the ball up, run your plays. Iowa doesn't let you do that. They're going to make you earn, and here it is again. They get you going east and west. You get the ball out of your ball handler's hands. Make you do things you're not normally supposed to do, and this is big trouble right here again. Still one from Thelwell. He'll throw one down. Drew Thelwell. Slams in a dagger to this Lions team. The pressure getting to Texas A&M Commerce right now with the full court press. But finally, Iowa falls back. An exclamation point on the start of the second half from Drew Thelwell there. Mm. Couple Khalid. big plays. Taking it back out. On the baseline, rolls out before Williams can retrieve it in, and that'll bring us to the under 12 media timeout. A lot of fire and a lot of energy from this Iowa team capitalized by a slam dunk. Drew Thelwell transfers in. When you're relentless in your pressure defense, you don't have to take the ball away from guys. You don't have to make foolish reaches or anything like that. Good point guards sometimes just lose their thought process and their training when they're facing pressure, and they just give it to you. And uh, Brandon McCaffrey's teams have been doing that for many years, and there's a perfect example. This game was pretty tight, and Iowa just snatched all the momentum with a couple steals, and right now the Lions don't know what to do. Step back there for Josh Six. He reaches double digits, dumped down the baseline, off the glass, and a foul called. That's a shooting foul on number 20, Peyton Sanford. You talk about the depth of this Iowa team. It's Fran, Fran McCaffrey mentioned it. it's one of their deepest teams yeah. they've had in years. And well, you look at Texas A&M Commerce, we've seen the same guys on the court pretty much all game. Is that something about just wearing 
this Lions team down, being able to bring in so many guys from their bench. Free throw there completed by Cameron James. He'll go for the second. Well, it's amazing, too, when you bring in waves of guys. It's just hard to follow the scouting report, right? There's a dead ball, and then you have three different players on the court. You sometimes forget who can shoot, who you're supposed to block out. It just puts a lot of pressure on a team, I and mean, there are different philosophies. I mean, Bo Ryan used to want to play just six or seven at Wisconsin. He, he thought later in the year his team got better or had more chemistry by playing together. And, you know, it's just totally opposite. Tom Davis, Fran McCaffrey, just play a lot of guys, try to play harder, play pressure defense. It's an exciting brand of basketball, but it's hard to measure fatigue at the end of games and what a play. Drew Thelwell, the basketball IQ, bounces it off the defender in front of him and takes it for himself. Iowa now leads by 19, working quickly. Scooter Williams off the front of the rim, gets his own rebound Whoa. and throws it down for two. Almost pulls down the hoop with him. And now looking the other way, pass all the way across the court to Sanford, throws it up for Freeman off the glass for two. Assist by Peyton Sanford, Owen Freeman gets points number 15 on the night. Great play by Peyton. He could have taken that three-point shot. I wanted him to take it, <laughs> but he saw what was going to develop before anybody else. Puts it up by the rim for a high percentage shot for his teammate. Nice step back there from Evan Phelps, a fadeaway shot. And now the two teams just trading some points on the board. Pass down to Price Sanford. Rebound by Freeman. Pass back uh, to no, Sanford. No, he was no, not no. ready for no, it. Oh, come on, Owen. You got to take that up, buddy. <laughs> I mean, right? That's a very that's unselfish true. play, but that's uh, that's seven foot against six eight, right point blank at the rim. I see Owen Freeman there. <laughs> Use the strength of. You got to go up with that 32. <laughs> I love that guy, right? He's, he, I mean, Big Ten freshman there, there he goes. He played hard that last five minutes. Big oh, number 32. Big Ten freshman of the year last year. Fran McCaffrey loves working with him. Great teammate. He won it so many weeks in a row, they almost had to name the award after him last. It was unbelievable performance. Here's another turnover. Almost, as Thelwell will step out of bounds. Yeah, Owen Freeman, I want to say one nine-time freshman of the week yeah. last year. Yeah. And you mentioned a co-freshman of the year. Not the only Big Ten co-freshman of the year here tonight. Well, <laughs> I did just turn 50, and I know that doesn't mean much to you, but to a lot of our listeners, they just felt really old hearing that. I apologize to anyone. Yeah, don't who worry just about it. Don't worry about it. Gained a wrinkle on their head or two. Yeah, that was 1993. Big Ten Freshman of the Year. That was a, that was a special award. I know Owen Freeman and his family really were proud to win that, and he deserved it. it what a, what a dominant. It's it, it's hard to come in to the Big Ten as a freshman to make that kind of impact, and that's too open. Bryce Sanford, wide open three. He'll send it to the bank. From the corner, Bryce Sanford. So He's we, now at 13 points. We talked about those misses from the three-point line early in the game. Uh, these guys, they don't care about that, right? And they're not going to change how they play. When they're open, they're going to take the three, and the percentages are going to be with them most nights. Stolen ball and timeout on the floor, Iowa. And when we talk about the big three, Peyton Sanford, Owen Freeman, Josh Dix, senior, junior, sophomore, continually passing things down, how valuable is it to have guys at every class that can be a leader? Well, it's just huge, right? I mean, it, not everybody has to be vocal. You can be a leader by just working hard, showing up early, making the extra pass. There's another, look at that. Just look at the ball movement. It takes 40 minutes to beat this Iowa team, and that's another wide open look that he'll typically knock down. I, I would have pulled there if I was Peyton. Would have been from Caitlin Clark range. Price is getting too much attention here. You gotta flip it over the older brother. Price is gonna fire it though, off the front of the rim and rolls over the backboard. So it's a good shot. Ball. It's a good shot. That's what they do. Good selection from Price there, firing nine shots from the arc today, connecting on three of them. Four from ten from the field. Yosef with it. 
Tries to get the runner, tipped away from Price. And out of bounds, off Price. Lions ball as they're gonna make some substitutions here with 8.09 remaining. A lot of junior college players, a lot of one-on-one -on -one ability. These guys have played high IQ basketball for the most part. The, the surge of Iowa three-point shooting, obviously, and the pressure defense has disrupted them in the second half, but it's been a good showing up to this point on the road against a bigger, stronger team. And they're still continuing to make the extra pass. Nice layup there on the reverse. But now Sanford working quickly into the paint, kicks it out to Dix. Takes it himself towards the baseline. Pass to the corner, Thelwell for three. Off the front of the rim and the backside, second chance for Dix, fires from three-point land. A rebound there from Sanford going back up and a foul called on the Lions. Down for an extra second. And Sanford working quickly up but we'll reach another media timeout. 7.40 remaining in the second half. Give Sanford an extra chance to get back up. Going up for two, and foul there by number 23, DeMarco Betha. We'll have the remainder of regulation when we come back from the break. Iowa leads 71-53 all day long. 17-11 there, you see at Commerce having a few more. Sending Iowa to the line a lot, but in this half alone, a M Commerce, six fouls, Iowa, five fouls, so pretty even in that category. Sanford at the line as he was fouled going into that media timeout. Sends him to the line for two, and he'll connect on both of them. Payton Sanford now at 13 points on the day. That ties the lead with his brother. No, that's second on the team tied with brother Price Sanford. Leaders Owen Freeman with 15. So Iowa 13 out of 18 from the free throw line, and the Lions only two out of three. That's good job by the guys in graphics pointing that out. Another nice pass by number 20, but this is a, this is a BTN student-led broadcast tonight, so great job, Colin. It's been fun to work with you and everybody back in the truck, and these are such great opportunities for college students to work in television, and it's not easy but it continues to get better every single year. And I know the Big Ten Network, Network is very proud of this. This is where everybody starts. You start here and work high school games, college games, BTN Plus. It's been a great opportunity in all sports for the men and women at the college level, at the Big Ten level, to get an opportunity to be on the air. It's a beautiful thing about the Big Ten. Again, just pleasure to be beside you today. You. And, of course, to our entire crew at Big Ten Plus today. Fantastic broadcast throughout the night. Going to close it out. 6.30 remaining here in the half as Thomas has it at the top of the key. One of my bosses, Alex Burchie at the Big Ten Network, he loves student you so much, he wants to just replace us all during the, every game with you <laughs> students. You'll be out of work. I'm not going to complain right now. All right, there you go. <laughs> little, little risky on the lob there. Fran McCaffrey could live with that, but those are the type of passes sometimes you make when you're up 20. Yeah, I mean, just a miscommunication, misread down the Dix as he was way in front of that pass. And now Dix will take a moment on the bench. Coming in, Cooper Koch, the freshman, back in for his first minutes of the second half. We saw some time from him in the first. He had just 12 minutes, recorded three points, one from two from the free throw line. So he does here in his second look of action. Kalik way short as that, that shot was tipped by Peyton Sanford. Now Dembele pulling up from three. Big man won't connect. Touch down the line. And they'll tip it in the Moser's shoe. So I will get the ball on the baseline. That will take it out, but an interesting note about Peyton Sanford. And all he's done today, 13 points, but one of 20 players listed preseason for the Julius Irving Small Forward Award goes to the best small forward in the country for the year. He was on the list last season, back on it again this year, following a year when he could have potentially been drafted, so a really high favorite for that award as he's gonna put two up off the glass and some music to these Iowa fans' ears, 79-53. Well, that's why he will be in the running for that award. He can shoot it, he can pass it, but nobody at that position rebounds as well as he does. Now, is he a small forward? 
you know, he's a, is he a wing player, is he a shooting guard? I, I don't know how they categorize it anymore, right? He's a positionless wing player. But he rebounds, and there's a perfect example. Comes to the rim, snatches the offensive rebound, kisses it off the glass, stuffs to stats. Well, an ugly sight here. Bryce Sanford now holding his left arm, more particularly his left shoulder. He was limping down the court, and that's why that whistle was blown to get him out of the game. He's going to get some looks there at the end of the bench. Hopefully all is okay. Scary sight if you're an Iowa fan, but Brother Pan pops it from three and nylon for him. Payton Sanford up to 18 points on the day. He takes the lead for this Iowa team in the game overall. Working the right lane. It's Evan Phelps, but a foul call there on Drew Thelwell. And Price still getting looked at there at the end of the bench. Keeping him out here, reaching towards that left shoulder still, as we mentioned. Not the only injury right now. Listen, is questionable coming into the day. Say, duo, Traore, a transfer from Manchester College for this Iowa team is out. He had a right, he had a boot on his right foot. You see him standing at the end of the bench for Iowa, wearing some street clothes. Iowa hopes to get him back soon. Phelps misses. The latter half of the free throws. Now Thelwell going the other way as Iowa leads 82-55. 4.45 and counting remaining in regulation. Finally finds Sanford open on the right wing, takes it himself, pass is tipped away by Williams, and then re-tipped by Sanford, so it's Commerce ball. Yeah, just a lot of new Minutes coming into the game and little confusion offensively there. I don't, I don't know if they wanted the high ball screen, but it just turned into a one-on-one. -on -one. There's the injury. I don't see that from Price immediately after going up with Scooter Williams there, grabbing towards his left shoulder. Still there at the end of the bench, no, no longer being attended to, so it looks to be all okay. As it's going out of bounds, tipped off Sanford, but stays in play. So Iowa ball, it's Kingsbury dipsing, dipping it to Thelwell. And now slowing down the game from the top of the key. Thelwell takes it himself, loses the dribble, kicks it out to Koch. Inside the paint from the left block, rims out. And now Commerce going the other way. Oh, great drive by Coop, a little shoulder shake. Takes it up strong with the left hand. He's got to finish that. Almost a turnover, but Kalik mm. fires for three. Mm. And it just hits every part of the rim, but cannot stay within. Sanford, a spin, and finds it off the glass. A 360 layup for the Julius Irving small forward watch list. My goodness, I mean, of all the creativity you can get out of a guy with experience, I mean, that's a NBA-style play right there. Yeah, what a what a spectacular layup, and I think he's going to go sit for the night. Great job by number 20. And look at this move. Takes the hit, throws it off the backboard. I'm so glad he's back. Well, that's it for him. He'll finish with 20 points on They're the going to score 83 or 84 most nights. You got to play over 40 minutes. I, you know, the Lions competed in the first half, and the second half, the Superior team got it done. But no, you just look. All these teams are older now. Even in these non-conference games, you got fifth, sixth, seventh-year guys coming in who are strong, older kids who can really play. And you got to be ready to play every single night on every single possession. Good job for the Hawkeyes in the second half to step up and get it done. And. Especially what, fast break points for Texas and in, in, in Commerce. I only have them down for six. And, you know, they needed to get out and have 15 to 20 in this game. When you play against guys who come from the junior college level, your know, transition defense is critical. And great job by the Hawkeyes for taking that away. I was a volunteer assistant at Southeastern College SEC years ago in Burlington, Iowa. And everybody from the state of Iowa knows about the Indian Hills SEC rivalry. And so it's junior college basketball is really good. And a lot of these guys you've never heard of, but they are elite. Sometimes just maybe a little smaller, maybe one step 
not as quick. But these kids transferring up to the D1 level, if you've ever been to the war on 34 with between Indian Hills and SCC, it's, it's if you've never been to it, go to it once. Go to it this year. Lorenzo Watkins. I played golf with Lorenzo this summer and Casey Fleming and Tobias. And let's just say the 18th hole came down to my three wood and it went well. It went well. It went well. Ask. Yeah, like Tobias, KC, we're talking some trash. And Ooh. Zoe and I took him down. That's what we do. That's what matters. <laughs> junior college basketball, junior college golf. All that matters is that you win, right? There you go. Down on the baseline, number four, Chris Adlum. Already at five points in his first two minutes of play here. He got subbed in there at the media timeout. And well, speaking of the lead, a few more substitutions. Iowa seeing some guys for the first time tonight. Yeah. Riley Mulvey is in. Carter Kingsbury, who we've seen a little bit, is back in, getting some minutes. And of course, now new player freshman for Iowa, number 34, Chris Tahoe, yeah. is in for the Hawkeyes. But at the line, it's Brock Harding, returning sophomore. And the first half of the 101 is good. And Brock's addicted to basketball. You know, he's a great student, a great teammate, a great leader. But he just, he lives in the gym. I mean, he has a tremendous workout before the game even starts. And, you know, you got Kingsbury and Koch in the game together. It's like old times, Hawkeye fans. Kingsbury and Koch running the floor together. But those two are going to have to contribute this year. And they're going to play minutes, and they're going they're going to be nights where they're going to have to knock in shots, and they're definitely going to step up and do that. Driving the baseline, kicking into the paint, putting it up off the front of the rim. Second chance is good. Number 21, KC, will get a chance to complete the three-point play at the charity stripe. But you mentioned Brock Harding yeah. and his, his routine. I mean, before the game, it was a little over two hours before tip-off that he was out here getting shots up, and Franz talked about it earlier this week. He said, quote, his work ethic is unparalleled, unquote, from Fran McCaffrey. I mean, it's been proven the past two years, gets out and works before the game, and I'm sure... You stick around a little bit after the game, he'll be getting shots up again. Yeah, no question. That's that's what he does. I mean, he's not going to leave anything on the floor. He's going to play his four years and know that he did everything he could do. But it, it is amazing, Colin, how early these guys get out on the court now, all the stretching, lifting, shooting they do before the game even starts. Harding taking it the other way after a seal. Blocked off the glass, number four, Chris Adlum for the Lions. Adlin now taking the shot for himself off the back of the rim. Almost a three for three day from the field for him to start off. Kingsbury, the newly scholarshiped Hawkeye, drives it into the lane, kicks out. Chris Tao off the rim and tipped out of bounds off Riley Mulvey. A great job by Kingsbury. Gets into the paint, jump stop, fundamentally pivots, kicks it out for the open three. And We've seen a lot of that action in this game. Wide open three-point shots created by dribble penetration and kicking it out. An interesting note here, Jacob Cook, number 10, oh, at the Jacob. top of the key, comes in. He's a walk-on wow. freshman for this Iowa team from Iowa wow. City West High School. There's a three-pointer from Moser, and nothing but nylon there. Beautiful shot. But now Cook with the ball, who we were just discussing, Average 12.4 points in high school, but his dad played basketball here in Iowa. Nathan, but now kicking out the Koch. That, a that, huge three though. That's what Coop does. We're gonna see a lot of that, and what a special moment for the Cook family as well. My goodness, wearing the Iowa uniform, playing on opening night as a Hawkeye. That is a big time deal. It is hard to make it at this level. Kingsbury, Koch, and Cook all on the same court together, wearing the uniform. Boy, it feels like the 90s all over again. Well, Moser will roll in the final points, and as time expires here on opening night, Iowa wins 89-67. They'll start their season 1-0.
ఇంకా వాళ్ళే వాళ్ళే ఇంటి ప్యాస్ Mm-hmm. <laughs>